To get this shot in 2022's Bullet Train, Brad Pitt was attached to a wire rig capable of rotating him 360 degrees, while this green suit performer safely controlled his movements. Paired with this wind machine, the VFX team could integrate him naturally into these slow-mo shots of the train mid-blast. From performing risky stunts in the air and at sea, to pushing car chases to new heights, here's what 12 2022 movies looked like behind the scenes. For Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise wanted to send himself and the rest of the cast up in real fighter jets. But first, they had to go through an intense five-month flying boot camp taught by none other than Tom himself. This ranged from learning how to withstand high Gs to escaping an underwater plane crash. The cast started training in single-engine Cessna 172 Skyhawks before building up to the more aerobatic Extra 300. And an L-39 Albatross got them used to the more complex maneuvers they'd be doing on camera. The result? Realistic facial contortions like this. Tom really was launched off the USS Theodore Roosevelt in an F-A-18. He accomplished this shot, normally reserved for naval aviators, in four to five takes. To capture all the action and reactions of the actors, the crew had to put cameras everywhere. They captured the exterior shots on the ground, as well as from these camera planes following all the action from above. They also put six cameras capable of capturing IMAX footage in each cockpit. Because space was tight, the cameras had to be small, and each one could also be split apart, allowing the crew to detach the lens from the body and capture a variety of angles. To safely achieve this dangerous car chase in the Batman, the stunt team decided to split it up, filming it in several separate locations. They shot the riskiest parts on a half-mile stretch of highway, allowing them to film 100 vehicles swerving and hydroplaning. And this stunt driver was able to drive the Batmobile through a real explosion. For action shots where Robert Pattinson and Colin Farrell were visible, the actors hopped into these hub cars, where mounted cameras captured them in the driver's seat while a stunt person operated the car from above. But the secret to tying it all together? These LED screens. Seven cameras captured the stunt team's real driving footage, which then played on this 360-degree screen. The Batmobile and the Penguin's car were placed on moving platforms in front for realistic movements, while the LED screens provided realistic lighting and reflections. Tom Holland described the stunts in this scene from Uncharted as the most difficult of his career. The team broke the action down into several parts. When Tom's character first falls out of the plane, they shot the sequence vertically to better simulate falling through the air. They attached the crates to these giant robotic arms, which moved the boxes back and forth while Tom was safely secured to these wires. When Tom climbs back into the plane, they placed the boxes horizontally to allow him to more easily jump from crate to crate. And this car isn't real. The front section was attached to a rig to pull it forward and the stand-in was later replaced with a CG model. Tom was attached to a set of wires to both pull him forward and keep him horizontal. Oh, no. Rising Sun Pictures worked on over 300 visual effects shots for the latest Thor movie, Love and Thunder, including a giant god and a battling baby. Outlandish scenarios like these required fully digital doubles. In this shot, the gigantic Rapu was standing on a platform, while Gore, played by Christian Bale, was lifted up by this tuning fork to make it look like Rapu had him in a chokehold. Animators replaced Rapu with a fully digital double for greater control, but they mapped the actor's real face onto the digital body to keep his performance intact. They did a similar replacement for Gore. On set, Christian was held up on his back. By replacing the angle of his body, it would look more like the character was actually being held up by his neck. And Baby Thor is based on a real infant. Rising Sun Pictures fed reference photos and behavior videos into a machine learning pipeline. So while Baby Thor's look and movements were animated, they were directly derived from real references, making it seem even more lifelike. 
In Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch battle while flying or floating. So Elizabeth Olsen and Benedict Cumberbatch, along with their stunt doubles, had to be ready for some intense wire work. Like here, when Wanda launches herself backwards during the Illuminati fight. Stunt double CC Ice was attached to a backwards flying ratchet. This setup required strong core engagement mid-flight, so she wouldn't fall forward or backward during the ascent and descent. And by rehearsing it enough to get the timing right, she could land in the right spot without looking. The setup changed for the aftermath of this floor explosion. This time, Cece was on a half wrap, meaning the cable was partially wrapped around her body while also attached to her harness. That way, once the ratchet was activated, Cece would spin around before hitting the floor. But certain wire setups worked for multiple situations. The crew filmed this flying stunt horizontally. However, they filmed it in front of a green screen, meaning they could also use it as a vertical takeoff from the ground. But for the comfort and safety of the actors, sometimes a tuning fork worked better. In the final shots, they were either locked in place with a harness or put into this twisting ring. That let them spin and flip while attached to the fork. Great for mid-air fight scenes. The crew of Jordan Peele's Nope built the Haywood Ranch House from scratch over a period of 10 weeks. During filming, it would also have to be drenched in blood. To achieve these terrifying shots, the special effects team took rain bars used to create movie rain and filled them with water that was dyed red. That created the look of bloody rain, but it would wash away too quickly. To show the lasting damage of the blood, production designer Ruth DeYoung sprayed the house with a non-toxic oil mixture she first used on There Will Be Blood that would soak naturally into its surroundings. The crew even strapped objects like an ice cream machine to the roof to represent the aftermath of the alien's attack. For this unforgettable storm sequence on a luxury yacht in Triangle of Sadness, all that turbulence was really happening in camera thanks to these gimbals under the sets. The base could only hold around 12,000 pounds, so the boat interiors had to be split into two separate sets, one with the hallway and bedrooms and another with the dining room. The steel base holding the set was placed on a gimbal that was capable of tilting the set from side to side. To find the right amount of movement to mimic a storm, the team tested several motions with objects and crew members. According to Panorama SFX's Matthias Jensen, they started by tilting the boat from 0 to 1.5 degrees as the storm picked up, all the way up to 13 degrees, making everything from the chairs to wine glasses to the food on this plate shake. And while the moving sets were filmed in front of a blue screen, the water you see splashing on the windows was real. The crew member you see here had to always spray in the correct direction based on the boat's forward movement. As the storm got worse, Panorama had to do some extra work. Like placing an air cannon under this exploding toilet and mixing 2,000 liters of water with soy sauce and oatmeal to get the right color and texture once the boat starts flooding. The rocking sets were so effective that some of the crew actually got seasick. This film's fight scenes raised the stakes by using everyday objects as weapons, which were specially designed and rigged by the props department. Like this keyboard. The props team cut a hole in it in advance, covered it with a piece of cardstock, and then glued all the keys back on so this pipe could easily go through it. For others, like this riot shield used by Michelle Yeoh, they removed these small pieces of exposed metal. Same went for all the zippers and buckles on Kihi Kwan's deadly fanny pack, which they covered in foam. But the fights went far beyond that. The cast members had to go through wushu and nunchuck training. And in tribute to Wire Fu, Jamie Lee Curtis performed a flying knee move here, and Michelle looked like she was delivering major blows with just one pinky. The disaster film Moonfall employed wind machines, flooded sets, and fake snow. But director Roland Emmerich had to go far beyond that, like pulling the actors on wires to account for the Earth's changing gravitational pull as the moon approaches. But the biggest challenge, this avalanche-based car chase. This involved a combination of special effects and VFX wizardry. While the wide shots would always be CG, they also needed shots of the actors in the cars. 
So the special effects team built these hovercraft-like platforms for each car, controlled either by hand or by hydraulics. These let them safely slide, float, drift, and crash into each other. All that action was captured by cameras attached to these three-axis cranes. That way, the action could be more effectively integrated into the wider CG shots. To create the illusion of a real moving train for Bullet Train, the crew built two different detached cars on a soundstage to represent different sections. When the train needed to pull up at a station, the cars were attached and placed onto a pulley system. The legs released air pressure against the floor, allowing the cars to slide easily. Additionally, each car's walls could come down, allowing the crew to easily move around the interior and to film fight scenes. To add the illusion of movement, the VFX team shot real footage of landscapes in Japan and then sped it up and projected it on these LED screens. The crew also filmed overhead footage from drones. VFX artists could then seamlessly place the CG train and tracks into those shots. While most action movies use as many cameras as possible, the Northmen made the unusual decision to use just one. That meant fewer cuts during action in the one-take Berserker battle. But the cast and crew had way less room for error in all the foreground and background action. 90% of the movie had to be storyboarded and pre-planned with a smaller model of the village. The stunts were also planned around the camera's path, which would move from cranes to pursuit vehicles to boats. One way to sell this whole illusion? Hidden camera edits known as stitches, which disguise the edits in the scene. You can see one here as the camera swings onto the Viking ship. You can see one of the cast members ducking the camera's path right here. The raid itself contained only four stitches, including this one when Alexander Skarsgård's character scales a high wall, and another at this brutal stomp. <laughs> to properly bring Elvis's story to life, director Baz Luhrmann built accurate replicas of Graceland and Beale Street and even acquired 300 cars and motorcycles to stand in for Elvis's famed collection. And while actor Austin Butler went through over 90 costume changes, that wouldn't make a difference if he couldn't imitate Elvis's iconic moves. So he worked with movement coach Polly Bennett. To help him really embody and nail the moves, Polly had Austin study references beyond concert footage, like animals and specifically their eye movements. They studied alligators emerging from the water and scoping out their terrain, and cats to mimic the cat-like eye movements they saw in The King. Selling the performance meant also working on the reactions. So Polly coached these Elvis superfans known as the Scream Queens. She rehearsed with them until they got their exaggerated arm-waving, body-shaking, and screams down. 